video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello there, folks. It seems that the choice of videos um, that I've put up for my Coral Blade Grotto broadcast have caused quite a stir in the sovereign citizen common law contingency. So many individuals have come out of the woodwork that normally wouldn't comment on my channel to basically try to preach or promulgate their viewpoints on common law and maybe because they're emotionally and intrinsically invested in the common law, they feel the need to defend it because they perceive that I'm attacking it in some way, which I'm not. An attack is different than a criticism. But of course, a criticism can be construed as an attack by someone who would be emotionally invested in a particular uh, scenario. Sort of like religion. Um, if someone is emotionally invested in religion and someone criticizes that religion, that emotionally invested person gets triggered and gets angry. It's sort of the same thing. I'm not saying these people are angry, but they really have reached out to me. Even one individual suggested that I needed to stop and correct my perspective on common law after I watched this video right here, which that individual... See, I look at everything through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. And so this individual that sent me this obviously doesn't have closure on what stop and correct means in that venue because in the correct venue of quantum grammar a stop and correct is when someone is doing something wrong making a mistake and or causing damage trespass or shipwrecks by you know virtue of said mistake or wrong that is what a stop and correct. That is when a stop and correct needs to happen. And the way that that would be brought to the individual is either the individual realizes it themselves and they correct it, or it's brought to their attention by an outside party who presents the problem and then presents a solution. That's a stop and correct. And then it's up to them, those two, to work it out. As to whether the, the individual who's supposedly doing the trespassing, who's making the mistakes, it's up to them to either accept that or to explain themselves, or it's up to them to work it out. But you can't just bring a problem to somebody and say, you need to stop and correct your perspective, and then don't offer anything else. <laughs> it's like, not a stop and correct. Anyways, so... I guess in order to appease some of these common law soft sit types, I'm going to watch this video, which is 
titled Right to Travel Explanation Point Success. Explanation Point, Explanation Point. Which, of course, is pronoun, adverb in the future tense, dangling participle verb, and then pronoun. So they obviously have no grasp of correct sentence structure. So that's not what we're looking for here. What we're going to look for here is the quote-unquote success in exactly how they do it. So let's check it out. <clears throat> Looks like they pulled to the back of a facility. A storage facility. Hello. How's it going, officer? Why don't we come all the way back here? Um, I just wanted to park on some private property where I feel safe and comf and okay, safe and comfortable, sir. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I just I just wanted to find the most uh. So this young individual just said to the officer. He wanted to find some private property so he could feel safe and comfortable. Well, does that young fellow have permission to be on that private property? Because that's what private means. It's private. If you don't own it, or you don't have permission to be there, why are you there? Spot the a parking spot where I felt comfortable. You know, okay. oh. where that. I was just wondering. I was like, where? Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't want it to make it seem suspicious or at all or anything like that, sir. Okay. Officer. Well, you obviously know the reason I stopped you. You obviously know the reason I've stopped you. Here it comes. There's no plates on the vehicle. I understand what you're going to say. I understand what you're going to say. So this guy, look at this officer. His hands are up here. He's smiling. Now, I have spoken with a lot of police officers. Let's put it that way. And they have a way of sort of, to use the fiction term, disarm, of disarming who they're speaking to or speaking with by appearing totally nonchalant and unconcerned. But really what they're doing is they are keenly observing everything that's going on. They're observing your demeanor, the expression on your face, if you're being nervous, antsy, if you are aggressive, if you're defensive. So that's what's happening right here. It's my guess is this officer is sizing this kid up and he sees that it is a kid, to use another fiction term, kid, a young fellow, as I said at the beginning. It's a very, very young fellow. Looks like, I don't even know if, if he's 21. But let's see, let's go here. Do you have a driver's license? Okay. Do you have a driver's license? I think this cop has a, he knows that's a rhetorical question, I think. So it is to my understanding under the, it's been upheld by the Supreme Court and it's, it's uh, under the law of the land, under common law, that we have um, a God-given a God given right to travel on the public highways untaxed without license, registration, or plates on a vehicle. As long as I'm traveling pri privately, I'm not engaged in commerce officer. Okay, you know, I want to be calm and cordial and respectful you to you. I don't want to be belligerent. I don't want no problem, sir. I don't want to be belligerent. Right, I, right. I don't want no problems with you, officer. All right, I don't want no problems. I'm just driving back. I mean, not driving. You see, this is legally terms. Yeah, these are legally terms. I'm traveling home. Um, I was from another location. I'm traveling home right now. I'm not engaged in commerce. This, prop this property right here is not engaged in commerce i'm not engaged in um uh, i'm not traveling with any goods products i'm not an uber driver i'm not a taxi driver i'm not a bus driver i'm not engaged in any of that so i know and i know my rights to my understanding that i'm not required to have any license registration or insurance in let's stop it right here you common law folks out there that are listening to this and probably cheering this fellow on which i'm cheering him on too I'm in this guy's corner, number one, because why? Because he has cojones. He's fumbling his words. He's mispronouncing his words, but he's pushing forward with courage and tenacity. And he has a little bit of knowledge. 
not so, I mean, he has knowledge of common law, of course, but I'm speaking above and beyond that. He's trying to articulate, in my view, he's trying to articulate to the officer basically that he's not, how can I say this? That they're, they're equals in a way, in that he's traveling, although he said driving, and then he caught himself and they both laughed. That was great. He's traveling on the road. And this is, again, word games, fiction word games, traveling, driving, commuting. I mean, what word are you going to use? What fiction, adverb, adjective, pronoun word are you going to use? But they're going back and forth in the the boy is articulating very well with great courage that he feels he has a position with knowledge to be on that roadway going home in the capacity that he's in with no fiction license, no fiction registration, no fiction plate. And he's expressed it very, very, very uh, firmly and earnestly to this officer that he's not aggressive, he's he wants no problems, he's not trying to cause any type of, you know, harm. And, I mean, kudos to this young man for what he's doing here in front of this individual who is armed. In order for me to travel from point A point to point B, okay. it's been a God-given right that's been upheld in the Supreme... Ah, that's the other thing that I was going to say. This young fellow is talking about rights, God-given rights. What does that mean, God-given rights? Rights come from an authority. So this young fellow recognizes God's authority. What is God? Did God come over to this young fellow and say, here's a list of your rights, young man. I'm giving this to you, and I'm also giving a copy of this to the Supreme Court of the United States, and they will uphold it as well. And... Therefore, you can go ahead and do this and do that. You can travel from point A to point B and be non-belligerent. Is that what happened? No, that's not what happened. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about when I say it's fiction. Because if you use fact, if you use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you have to be able to certify all of your facts. You have to be able to certify them to another contract party. Bottom line, rights are given by an authority. If you talk about you have rights, then that means you have accepted someone or something to have authority over you because they are the ones that gave you those rights. So you're not the authority. The rights are the authority. And who's the authority of the rights? The author of the rights. That's why I don't say that. I never use rights. I don't participate with the concept of rights because that's part of the whole authoritarian construct control fiction system that's in place that common law is a part of. I hope you sovereign citizens, sovereign men and women are getting this. Nothing against you. I'm just telling you. Your system is part of the fiction system court and the law of the land and if you want to press charges with me officer I can, I can stop because we have no place yeah i know i i can in my view that's a mistake which is i mean forgivable with this young man because he is probably very nervous he's fumbling over his words why in any situation would you ever suggest to an officer why would you ever mention pressing charges? It's sort of like when you're, if you're boxing and you put your left hand down, whack, you're going to get hit. 
with a straight right. That's, that's what he just did there by saying pressing charges, by mentioning that. He, now he's put that on the table. It's not it's, – why would you ever do that? Why wouldn't you just wait and see if the officer does that? You know what I mean? Why would you even put that thought out there, that energy out there? Yeah, no, I, I've, I've been – Do anything crazy? No, no, right. I, and I, I, no, and I, I – Right, I, and I completely respect – DUI enforcement. So now the officer has credentialed why the reason, their volition for being out there at that time of the night is DUI enforcement. So this whole time, the officer has ascertained that this young boy, this young fellow, is probably not under the influence of anything. That's a guess. Again, that's a guess on my part, but... Knowing police the way I know police, I'd have to say that, that that is probably, I'm probably right on the money. I respect you that you haven't made it, jumped to any conclusions, because I've already had this experience many times with many other officers, and my experiences have not been pleasant. So I'm just trying to artic articulate myself to the best of my abilities, okay. and I want to demonstrate to you that I'm a, uh, um, I don't think I'm above the law. I know that as long as I'm not creating any loss, injury, or harm, or I'm not in the danger to the public, and I'm not doing anything bad, and I have, I'm not, I'm not, I, there's no evidence of me in a commission of a crime, or a bad committed a crime, or, uh, or ain't no evidence of me committing a crime, I know it's, it's, if, as long as there's nothing of that sort, I know that I'm fine, and as well with my rights to travel from point A to point B, officer. I hear you, but you also understand where our beliefs are different, not our beliefs, but our my requirement to enforce the law and your beliefs on how you interpret the law. This officer is a very nice, kind, patient officer. The most patient and kind officer so far. He even corrected himself on the word beliefs, which blows my mind. It means that this individual obviously has dealt with this type of traffic stop multiple times just like the the young boy said that he's dealt with lots of cops and had bad experiences this particular police officer their particular character traits their demeanors not your average police officer demeanor let me say that right now from my experience he just seems like a super nice guy well, I mean, I, 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 you, you probably been in, ran into this a bunch of times, right? Driving around with no plates. I'm just saying, I have a thing to do, just like you, uh, saying that you understand the law one way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at, the law another. Uh, yeah, at the, I mean, at the end of the day, the thing is, what do you want to do here? Because I want to talk to you as a man. Right. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to act like this. Uh, the suit that you have on is creating any kind of clout or judgment. I want to talk to you respectfully as a man. So it's to my understanding and I have continued to do it. And if you, if regardless, if you want to put some charges on me. I okay. I was just about to say that is the best thing that this young fellow has said so far. That he wants to talk to the police officer man to man. And he built up to it. He, I mean, it would have been bad if he just started off with that. With my perception, it would have been bad to start off with that. But he built up to it, and he feels comfortable saying it now for whatever reason. But that was the best thing when he said, I want to talk to you man to man, human being. You know, human being would probably be the better term, less abrasive in this scenario. And he said, that suit, I would have said uniform. Uniform and armaments and stuff like that is not influencing or intimidation or anything like that. We're just going to talk human to human. Great. That's called leveling the geometric playing field of communication. He just did it there. But then, but then, he had to take a crap on it by mentioning pressing charges again. Why would he do that? I will end up... I'd rather not write you a ticket. I'd rather not write you a ticket. Okay. So this is a turning point, I would say. 
what are we? We're not even halfway through yet. We're almost halfway through. This is a turning point. He just said, I'd rather not write you a ticket. So what is unsaid is, so don't, please don't give me a freaking reason to write you a ticket or escalate it. This officer is basically telling this kid he's going to let him go. Yeah, because I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want no, I don't want no harm done to nobody. I have no ill will intent. I'm in so good faith, clean love, hands. Um, what, what did you want to ask, officer? What did you want to ask, officer? Can I get your name and date of birth? Run your VIN. If everything's clear, I'm gone. This is such a sticking point with these people. They don't want to share their name. I don't get it. The only reason why someone would not want to share their name is if there's something attached to that name, whether it's fiction or fact, whatever it is. I'm not talking about venue. I'm talking about the reason why the officer wants the name, as I explained in other videos, is because he wants to put it in the system to see if there are any warrants, if the kid is a, who knows, wanted for murder, felony firearm possession, uh sex offender, whatever, you know, he wants to see if there's anything attached to his name, because that's his job. That's why he wants the name. And if you, I mean, yeah, the, the cop's name is right there on his shirt, on his, on his uniform. So if you want to have a geometric level playing field, then you need to have some names here. Like I said in the other video, I mean, what do these people want to do? Walk around with a bag over their head so no one knows who they are? I mean, come on, folks. Okay. Now, I've had, I already had many bad experiences uh, okay. giving you, I mean, giving officers. Good correct there. Good correction. My name. Okay. And when I say my name, I do understand that nowadays y'all like to use uh, our legal fiction name and put liens against that name, which is a. Nowadays, that's always been the case. That's the, the all caps name. That's what ties you into it, the birth certificate system and all that stuff. That's, it's not just nowadays. It's been since almost time immemorial. The public charge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, way, that takes a lot of time, energy, and a lot of, quote unquote, a labor out of my time and day and it's depleting me and it's wasting and draining me and I understand that this is all a, a business game this is nothing strictly business nothing personal I completely understand that I I I would prefer not to provide you any form of identification okay I'm not sure I would have said that telling this officer what it is or what it isn't I mean that I mean I, and but the officer is very very kind so I'm sure the officer in his head is probably thinking, all right, that's this kid's interpretation of what's going on. Not my interpretation, the kid's interpretation. He's entitled to his interpretation. He's entitled to his opinion. That's probably what's going on. But if is it if it isn't horrible, I've left the VIN uncovered. Mm -hmm. You can run the VIN number. This car is not stolen. I have no problem with you it's running the VIN number. This is private property. No, I purchased it. Has it ever been registered before? No, I uh, I have not registered it, okay. so I've maintained it in uh, private. That's a good answer. The cop said, "Has it ever been registered?" And the kid said, "I have not registered it. It has been maintained." So he's just taking jurisdiction over himself, and he's not offering any outside information. Whether it was reg registered before he bought it. He's not giving that. He's just taking jurisdiction over his own construct. So, thumbs up for that. Means for private means. I've not registered it. I've not gotten license for it. Okay. And I, I'm not in no contract with the state of Colorado to give you jurisdiction. I don't have. A, a, I don't need. I don't even want to say I don't have a license, but I don't have that contract uh, for y'all to subject me to that jurisdiction okay. and for those of you out there who doubt it everything is contract a license is a contract what they're doing right now between each other they're contracting this is all contract 
So uh, you're more than welcome to run the plates. I mean, not the plates, the VIN number. Yeah, yeah I, I can read the thing. Um, this card's not stolen. I purchased it privately. Other than that, I feel very um, uncomfortable providing my personal information. Especially if I know that it will be used against me it in the court of law. It will. Especially with all the bad experiences that I have with um, policy enforcement. Um, I just feel very comfortable not I'm providing not information. Anything, but I have to figure out who my fool is driving the vehicle. And, and that's you the know, thing. You're yeah, this is not a vehicle. It is a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> what is really kidding? Oh my god. No, a, a, a vehicle is classified as somewhat a uh, property engaged in commerce. This property is not engaged in commerce, officer. Okay, this is an automobile. It's, it was first considered an automobile, and once yeah. people decided to register it, it became a motor vehicle. So, this is not a motor vehicle. If you want more proof that common law is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, right there. Right there. Vehicle, automobile, car, motor bus, vessel. I um, classify this as an automobile, okay. private transportation through private means. Sorry, I got some in my mouth. No, it's okay. It's okay. And um, so, it is to my. Okay. Yeah, he's probably. And, and I'm sorry to ask, but what was your name, officer? Huh? What was your name, officer? Let me speak right here. I'll give you my card. So okay. You know, okay. Okay. Okay, folks. What is Rule one, rule equal about that. The police officer asked the kid his name. The kid won't give it, won't share it. But yet, when the kid asks, him, asks the officer, the officer, boom, 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 says, yeah, my name is Deputy blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you my card. Same thing I would have done. Because I stand behind what I say, what I do, and I actually have a card that credentials myself as a live life claimant, fate writ volition claimant, I have a C pass C treaty, peaceful and neutral, with the balance of the honor and the grace, and the maintenance of the rule one rule equal, with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, um, mechanics. So, I mean, there are some little bit discrepancies here, but overall, this young fellow has handled himself very, very well. Thank you. And you're the sheriff, right? You're a sheriff, I work right? With the sheriff, yeah. Oh, you work sheriff with the sheriff. Deputy, okay. okay. Sheriff deputy. Okay. Sounds good. Wow, he's such a young fellow. I admire his tenacity and his courage for such a young fellow and not getting angry or defensive or frustrated. He has a lot of poise for a fellow that he age. Got pulled over again for having no license plate on my automobile. I was not infringing on the public. I was not an endangerment to the public. I was not swerving lanes. I was not speeding. As you can hear the officer said, he simply pulled me over because I did not have plates. Now I explain myself to the best of my abilities to this officer. I can provide this officer with a lot of documentations pr proving that there's court cases Proving that we have the right to travel from point A to point B. Because that right was given to you by an authority over you, which you consented to. So therefore, you are subordinate to an authority that gave you rights. You are not the authority. The rights are the authority. And the author of those rights is the overarching authority. Without 
license registration and documentations. Like just license registration and li license, license plates, registration, insurance. I'm sorry, y'all. My mind is a little clouded right now. I'm a little, I'm shaking a little bit, but it's okay. Cause I'm no kidding. I'm controlling myself. And this is part of, uh, I'll share a little correct sentence structure, communication, parts, say syntax, grammar, psychology with you. When you use the word control, first of all, it has a particle of negation in it, contra, contradiction, no diction, control. The first part, contra means no, and the OL is contract, so it means no contract. So psychologically, um, the way that I navigate that particular mental scenario is I say I am a steward of myself. I'm guiding myself. I'm guiding my breathing, my mannerisms, my psychological condition of state. I am a steward of that. I'm not trying to control it. No, I'm letting it flow and being a steward of it, very gently nudging it and guiding it where I feel as master of my vessel that it's, you know, most beneficial to go for everyone involved. So anyways, point being, his volition, no matter how, you know, he fumbles his words or whatever, however clouded his mind is because he's nervous, his volition is correct. But this officer does definitely seem a lot more calm, cordial, respectful, yes. and polite. So I respect that. You are blessed. You are very fortunate to have an officer like this in this situation. And let's give faith to the most high that I will get out of this clean hands. Get out of this. Again, folks, as I've said, you know, psychologically, the condition of mind that you're getting out of something means that you're in something. You've done something wrong and you're trying to get out of it. This individual has done nothing wrong from the context of the video. In the officer's eyes, there's something wrong because the officer is not seeing the legal plates that he's used to seeing. But overall, in the do no harm, rule one, rule equal domain, this individual has done nothing wrong. So there's nothing to get out of. So folks, if you have that mentality that you're trying to get out of something, you're trying to get out of a ticket, you're trying to get out of a DUI, you're trying to get out of a jam, think of it a different way. If you've done nothing wrong, there is nothing to get out of. It's a very subtle psychological difference that can make all the difference in your navigations. With no problems. I'm not even going to try to push this issue. Right? You're driving a much like just a simple $25 ticket or how old a ticket is. I'm not going to sit here. You have your beliefs. We have our laws we have to enforce. We're just going to put it as, what is it? A big, agree to disagree? Agree to disagree. Plate. The reason I stopped you is you had no plates. Okay? That's the, the reason for the stop. There's my card. Got it. All right? Thank you, sir. You have a good day. Thank you, officer. Not going to push the issue. Keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Now, despite all the word fumblings and things that happened during this video, this young fellow had the correct volition. And the cosmos put in the situation, that particular type of officer, which, as you can see, what's happening here 
If you were using correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar in this situation, it would have tenfold the results. Matter of fact, I would predict that it wouldn't even go on this long. If I'm, Now, this is just speculation, pure speculation. But based upon my own experience, you get a volition like this. You get someone who's peaceful and neutral, who tries to does their best to establish a geometric level playing field, rule one, rule equal, with the balance of honor and grace. And he meets up with another individual who has that same type of volition, like that officer, even though they are a fiction Vasily, this is what happens. Okay? This is what happens. Okay, so it looks like uh, username Young and Fearless cannot believe that they have safely navigated through this. They cannot believe that this officer has just let them go without a ticket. I don't think in their wildest dreams that they thought that that would happen. But this success, I predict, is going to bolster this individual to learn more and to be autonomous. Even if it is just using common law, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun in the fiction, navigating within the fiction, using the fiction to your advantage, he's got priceless experience banked from this scenario. Last time I got pulled over by policy enforcement, they issued me a ticket because I gave them my legal fiction name. This time, I made it through clean. No license, no registration, no insurance, and I pulled it off. He did pull it off. Now, in the fiction system, uh, if he would have given the officer the name, I'm not sure that would have made any difference because if the officer ran the VIN number, then it would be connected to this individual's name if there was a bill of the lading for this individual purchasing the vehicle. So the officer can see that. I'm pretty sure. Not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. And I think the police officer left. Let me go ahead and show you what I have, what I have on my plates right now. That's what I have. Well done, young and fearless. Well done. If you would like to bolster your knowledge base, Take what you've used here, your volition, your courage, your utspa, your cojones, and put them into correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, and parlay it into an airtight aegis for your vessel and your biosphere. Contact me at the email address below, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And I'll schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation for you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.